Hello and uh, welcome everyone to this presentation uh, by Systra. Uh, it is on the subject of digitalization and hypervision solutions supporting mobility. Um, today we're going to be moderated by Johan Amsterdammer, who is the Digital Mobility Director at Systra. So the floor is yours, Johan, to start the discussion. Yes, uh, thank you. I'm Johan Amsterdammer. I'm very happy to facilitate this uh, panel today with the great team we have around the screen here. Uh, just to say a few words about Sistra. Uh, we are glad to host this panel. We are one of the world's leading engineering and consulting group. Uh, we specialized in public transport and mobility solutions. And we provide our customers uh, our expertise in transportation infrastructures and systems uh, during the entire life cycle of their project. Uh, within Sixtra, I'm uh, the digital mobility director in charge of developing new business in the system uh, business unit. And today we are going to talk about digitalization and hypervision solutions to support mobility. We are going to share each of our company's experience and knowledge on how, about how to improve the resilience of transport system and the passenger experience. So to see a few words about the context, um, over the last five or 10 years, the, there, has, there has been a rapid evolution of urban mobility. Uh, we've seen coming e-mobility, private mobility service providers, etc. And the COVID, COVID crisis has had its own impact on of all this, uh, as everyone knows, and it's challenging cities and operators in the way they organize and manage their mobility and transportation networks. And indeed, at the same time, they have to deal with several challenges we are going, going to talk today. First one, for example, is to adapt quickly to new ways of traveling and new mobility expectations. Uh, they have to provide a seamless customer experience, uh, provide a coherent global service uh, in order to integrate car sharing services, cooler ones, mass transit uh, services. Um, it's a new way of defining multi-modality. And uh, they have, in the meantime, have, they have to enhance passenger information in real time. Uh, just to take an example, we've all heard about uh, the traffic resuming in one hour. I think this is not the answer, the question uh, asked from the travelers. They want to, to have the answer to, to how long their journey is going to, uh, to, to last from the point they are to their destination. So to, to, to tell us that from a, a real time perspective, we have to use data and we'll take some more examples later. And these challenges have to be tackled within a very constrained and tense financial equation. And that's why we are going to talk about data and the levers, the lever uh, they can uh, they can bring in the in the overall challenges. We have to be realistic. The race to continually increase transportation capacities, building new lines with higher frequencies, etc., is no longer the only solution. And this race is facing a scarcity of uh, public funds. I've already said it, and a limit of space and an environmental policy evolution. So this is uh, a context we have to take into account. And about the considering the passenger expectations and mobility demand, it's evolving at. Uh, very much finer space and time scale. Uh, we have PTOs around the table. I'm sure every morning they ask themselves about how many travelers they're going to have today on this morning and, and tomorrow when the, the rules change and, and, and everything. So that, that is why all levels has to be activated to answer these challenges and data is one of them. And we are going to try to share with you how it can optimize the performance of existing capacities, improve the resilience of transport system, and how we can find the closest match between mobility supply and, and demand. And uh, keeping in mind that we have to put the passenger and the traveler at the heart of the transport system. 
Uh, upstream work is needed to identify and mature all these use cases. We have to, to think about new data and systems engineering, new roles and responsibilities, governance, and, and so on. So we are fortunate to have experienced people and companies around the table. And I'm sure they're going to share their practical experience of this upstream work and about their operational projects uh, about hypervision solutions. So if I, I may uh, begin with uh, Soren, who is coming from Copenhagen, uh, could you please uh, tell us more about the need of data-driven mobility organization and answer the traveler needs you have in the greater Copenhagen? Yeah, thank you, Johan. Um, yes, uh, my name is Søren Bum. Uh, I'm a policymaker and a product developer in the capital region of Denmark that is in, in, placed in Copenhagen. Uh, and, and we are uh, public authorities squeezed in between the municipalities and the state level. Uh, and we are responsible for the net of regional buses and local trains. And soon we'll also be running a, a light rail together with uh, municipalities on that, uh, that track. <clears throat> so um, we are not uh, an, a road authority. And that also makes things a little bit different when we are trying to introduce innovative new ideas. Um, uh, so we are really keen on uh, working together with our operator, uh, 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 the PTA called Movia here in our region. Um, but we are doing also analyzing, looking into the future. And one of the things that we need is a stronger focus on how we can optimize the transport uh, system and capacity of the whole net uh, and, and, and how we can have better conditions in, especially in the suburban, suburban areas where uh, we can see that the car ownership is two or three cars. Uh, so uh, a better options for the residents living in the more rural areas and, and combining their daily travel with public transport is also something that, that we are facing uh, a, a better, a more needs for. Uh, and, and, and ideas also here to how can we nudge them to drive outside the peaking hours. So um, yeah, and I still believe that uh, I, I think we will not be facing the, the nine to five jobs uh, so much longer. Uh, so I really, really think that we can, we can not, uh, are not need, the need of building wider roads and, and more bus lines and train lines is not that important. I really think that data now should be on the, on, 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 on the top of what we're doing. Um, so because the, the commuters, they want to have access to flexible, reliable, and comfortable fast services. Uh, and not only for the weekdays, but also in the leisure, leisure times uh, and, and during the whole week. So um, yeah, uh, and, and the situation here in Copenhagen is that we are very much digitalized. The public is very digitalized. We have a lot of uh, confidence in using apps and, 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 and electronic payments. Uh, but we don't face the congestion that we see in other uh, metropolitan uh, regions that we usually are comparing ourselves with. Um, so, but but we can see that that will change within the next ten years, and we will be totally struck in traffic like we we see in, the, in major cities. So, uh, my what I want to bring to the panel is that we need we need to 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 find better frames for. For, for innovate uh, with the public transport agency and how we can make the combinations better um, because we need that uh, for now uh, and not waiting. Ah, thank you, Soren. Um, what about you, um, Thibault, uh, who's in Villanova? Could you share about your experience uh, of um, enhancing data for PTA and PTOs in their steering and decision-making? Sure, thank you, uh, thank you, Yuan. Um, so yeah, my name is Thibault. I'm, I'm the co-founder of Yanova. Um, so we're a Paris-based startup, and we are basically providing a, a third-party mobility data platform to support cities and operators in data sharing, as well as providing data insights for mobility management. So today we aggregate um, data from 50, oper 50 operators, from shared mobility to delivery services, and the platform is used by 20 municipalities, uh, mainly actually for data-driven management and regulation of new services such as e-scooters. Um, and so, as you mentioned, uh, mobility has changed at a very um, rapid pace. Um, COVID crisis has only strengthened that trend um, with more e-commerce deliveries and uh, the growing presence of micro-mobility in cities as well as ride-hailing. 
um, and cities are looking to better manage the share of public space um, as well as um, steer a sustainable transport system. So the greatest opportunity for cities that we see is to leverage mobility data from connected vehicles. Um, and uh, this is to achieve basically the goals that I mentioned earlier. And this is where basically as, 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 a, as a company, we support them um, in providing the data platform, but also the hypervision layer, which is basically management and regulation and analytics tool. So transport authorities need data for planning um, and orchestration, but also for enforcement and control. A uh, few of the use cases that we worked on um, that I could share now. Um, so Bru Brussels actually used shared micromobility road usage from vehicles telemetry to plan and prioritize the new Corona lanes that they um, set up last last year, uh, post first uh, lockdown, uh, COVID lockdown. Uh, Milan uses today GPS data to control uh, shared mobility operators compliance to the city regulations, specifically on no parking and vehicle caps. Zurich is creating and communicating their geofence policies um, using um, standardized API um, provided by our service. And Paris uh, has just started um, um, a project to use data from last mile delivery services to understand the impact of e-commerce on street usage. So we see that uh, these use cases are very um, wide um, and we actually as a company worked uh, with city authorities to develop these use cases. These use cases, uh, my advice uh, would be that should be the first focus on uh, for any uh, PTAs, PTO um, and um, local authorities um, to make sure that they can really define well these use cases um, and prioritize them uh, as a key um, success for any uh, data project. Yeah. Great, thank you, Thibaut. Um, it's, it's what about uh, mass transit, Gaian? Do could you share about uh, the, the use cases you've identified and how it can be transferred from what Thibault has, has just said uh, to to that world? Yes, yes. thank you, uh, Johan. Uh, so I am uh, Gaian Vicent. Uh, I am working for Thales Ground Transportation. Uh, in the business line, which aims at providing uh, operation control centers and integrated communications. So our objective is to improve uh, passenger experience. Uh, we are mainly providing solutions for mass transit uh, market, as Yuan uh, said, uh, main line, metro, uh, tramways. Um, so how uh, can uh, the soft modes, individual modes can be transferred to mass transit? Uh, well, um, there are a set of uh, solutions based on different sensors and data, uh, which uh, enable to, to predict the flow of uh, passengers and uh, density on board the plat and on board and on the platform. Uh, so therefore, um, in a real time, uh, we are able one uh, to adjust the frequency uh, of the trains. Of course, when it's uh, it's possible, huh? because when you are at peak hours, so you you can't do more. To, uh, to better inform the passengers so that uh, they can have a smoother journey, avoid the crowd, and find also a seat uh, in the train. Um, and um, to do that, the data collected are from several sources, and uh, we can correlate the data. They can come from a, a video from different cameras to uh, able to assess the density of passengers based, for example, on skeleton detection. Um, also, we can have the data coming from counting sensors. We can have the data coming from check-in, check-out data when available for check-out, for example, because it's not always the case. And we can also have the, the, the mobile coverage. So these are the, the examples of data that we can correlate. Um, for me, the power of, of data is not uh, to be able only to collect it, uh, but also to be able to analyze it. Um, because uh, the, the, the purpose at the end is to uh, provide added value with the analysis. So um, it is the role of the new supervision centers, the data-driven operation centers, which are um, less and less in, uh, in silos. Huh? We, previously, we had uh, uh, one operation center only for one line, and they didn't talk uh, uh, to, to each other with only single sources of data. Now it's more it's not anymore the case, and we have more and more also integration, uh, both between the data and also uh, between 
the lines and the modes uh, uh, of transport. So um, uh, we have uh, correlation between sources of data, as I said, and also between the lines. And we can also have uh, a real-time information to be able to optimize uh, the transport offer depending on the demand, uh, which is uh, which is really uh, um, uh, the expectation presented uh, by uh, by uh, Soran at the beginning. Yeah, thank you, Gayan. Uh, it's it's very interesting to to see the the the, the issue from a, an operator perspective and to 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 imagine how we can provide them the correct tools and uh, deal with this multimodal uh, regulation uh, control centers. And to, to, for this topic, I would like to, to end the floor to uh, Yannick from Lausanne. We, we, could you share uh, about your projects and needs you have there? Sure. Uh, so hi, I'm Yannick Lang. I'm working uh, in Lausanne Operation Company in Switzerland. Uh, so here we are operating a wide variety of different uh, transport modes like uh, metro, tramway, bus, electric bus, trolley bus. Uh, and so, so the, the question was how to improve our uh, clients' uh, uh, comfort when traveling from point A to point B and directly from point A to point B and using all the, all the, the different infrastructure we have here. So we basically uh, quickly switched to the, the mass needs, like any client could request anything uh, in from now to any coming years uh, to go from one point A to one point B. The point is we have different modes, we have different um, operating and our different system for all of this mode, how to compute this data on our own and how to use it when the need comes from the, our clients to uh, to, I don't know. Come uh, when you have a description in the in, in the traffic. Okay, you would directly switch to one uh, uh, on-demand uh, transportation route, alternative route, directly on, on your cell phone. So we have thought about it, and we allow launch a program to uh, to to allow us to have this uh, uh, this uh, thinking, this simple to know how implement it with our data, with our own data. So we have um, uh, worked from two approach. One is, okay, what is the work from operation uh, company? What operators do on day by day? But also from the other side, what are the client's needs uh, by directly use cases, okay? When you have a description on the highway, uh, how people go to the center, what is the impact of, of on, on traffic and how the users of public transportation can, uh, can switch to that. One uh, other use cases which, which has been uh, really topical those days is, is COVID. What if we add, if we add in the beginning of this crisis different information about every client, if he has or not the, the illness, uh, if uh, we know if this, um, if, if, some, if a metro cars are full or are not full, we could directly implement some uh, applicative solutions based on our data and have some uh, control command directly with our system. That would have been uh, a very good tool. So our project in aims at uh, identifying those use cases. And now we are really interested in providers that could help us to implement the use cases with uh, the improvement of our system during the next coming 10 years. Great, thank you. Um, it's very interesting. Gayan, could you, could you share? Do you have uh, any similar experience or any similar projects to present uh, somewhere around the world? Yes. Um, so as I, as I said, uh, the more we have data and capacity to analyze, uh, the, the more um, we will be in position to adapt the offer depending on the demand and in real time, and also be able to to communicate to passenger uh, accordingly. Uh, I can, yes, I can give you uh, the example of, uh, of Singapore where we have deployed uh, uh, passenger guidance on platform based on a real-time evaluation of uh, passenger density on board. So the solution uh, makes a video analysis from existing CCTV camera. So we haven't deployed uh, uh, new, uh, new cameras for that. 
Uh, and we are able to provide real-time crowding data. So it means that we are able to inform um, the passenger in which car uh, the upcoming train is busy or not. So for uh, each place on the platform, we know if, uh, if uh, it is crowded as green, so not really crowded, amber, middle, or red, uh, really crowded, so it's not the place where, where you need to stay on the platform. And then it guides uh, the passenger to the base place uh, to wait uh, on the platform. Um, another example that I can uh, give, which is a little bit more multimodal oriented, is the management of the Dubai city uh, in case of a special event. Um, and the special event they have is the New Year fireworks. Uh, it used to be because uh, in 2021 it was not the case. Um, uh, the, the multimodal operation center in that case is able to predict the flow uh, and also the traffic uh, on the road to adapt the frequency of the train and manage also the police operation because the, there is also a link with the, the police in case of incident. And it also, uh, uh, yes, takes into account the road traffic and adapts the demand in terms of taxis, for example. So, in summary, collecting data is key, but the most important is uh, really to better serve the mobility of passengers. And um, the, major, uh, the major benefit of the data-driven OCC is really to enhance, to have a, enhance situational awareness so that the operators can anticipate, can also react fa faster, uh, and uh, the functions are automate, more automated and not uh, in, uh, in silos. Um, so in that case, it, it, uh, it makes it much easier to deal with unexpected events and crises because we have kind of anticipated uh, those, uh, those, uh, those events. Um, tomorrow, uh, multimodal OCC so will manage many different modes of transport, but we, we are not yet really there. And operators will be able to adapt their transport offer in real time at the level of the entire city uh, or region, it is a dream, uh, and it enables to provide the best real-time uh, information to the passengers and e inform uh, um, he or her before the journey uh, uh, starts, and uh, it uh, guarantees the best door-to-door uh, -door trip because the, the, the objective is really to have for each passenger the best door-to-door -door, uh, trip. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah, we see we have the um, mass transit uh, issue or uh, problematic, and uh, the overall uh, city supervision and the, with the connected cars and the car sharing, the road traffic. Uh, Thibault, you you shared some things uh, about this earlier. You want to react to what I've been said? Uh, yes, briefly. Um, so again, talk about uh, event management. Um, what we see is that the role of transport authorities um, is gradually basically moving as mobility orchestrator. And for mobility orchestration, which is basically, I think, the last sort of step of maturity as a transport authority is kind of like orchestrating mobility in real time, which basically needs to have first a great collaboration with mobility operators, but also like to have like really good good, powerful data um, to basically have this mobility orchestrations. Um, and what I see is that, um, again, basically like using real-time data, historical data for anticipating demands and pushing certain modes, certain mobility solutions on specific city events. But also like um, we talk about public transport, um, public transport as interruption, public transport as issues sometimes. Um, and a good way basically to rebalance the load would be to then use like these new innovative solutions, such as like shared micro mobility or micro transit ride hailing to basically then, you know, transfer the loads and have a full um, real time orchestration. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if we go back to public transport and end the floor to uh, Juan. Um, could you tell us more about your project and what have you, you have succeeded in uh, integrated systems and deployment of data-driven solutions, please? 
Yeah, sure. Nice to be with you. Uh, hi to everyone from this sunny Madrid these days. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we are uh, the public uh, uh, the public tr uh, transport operator in Madrid, the largest surface operator in Spain. We run the the public bus service. We have more than ten thousand parking lots here in Madrid. Uh, uh, some hundreds of electro chargers for electro mobility, and we operate the bike sharing scheme, the largest bike sharing scheme in Madrid, which is. Big and we have a, a less popular services, which is the toll truck, uh, which people really don't like that much, but it's important for, for the city. Uh, what we have done for related to data, uh, in last December, we launched our mobility as a service proposal for the city, which is called Madrid uh, Mobility 360, uh, where we integrated all the information for all the public transport operators, uh, the metro, the, ourselves, or another buses and, and trains uh, with uh, bike sharing, uh, motor sharing, e-scooters and car sharing services. So that is almost uh, every single mode uh, you, you can have that. Uh, and it was really challenging to, to get all the data uh, properly uh, uh, together, which was, and I agree with Thibault uh, in related to the authority, we, we, we could, uh, we, we done that because uh, of our authority was working on gathering and, and uh, qualifying that data because sometimes when you start scrapping down the data you find that the data quality is not that good you only need you not only know how good is your data when you start using that uh, and there's some stones we have uh, stepped onto uh, these uh, six uh, or five months since we launched is the data quality is also a big issue uh, a big issue and you don't know until you really go into it uh, you think it is okay but uh, that, that's important and uh, you have to to go for layers of quality of data uh, from data which is static based on planning to real time and uh, event driven data and so, uh, what we have learned so far also is we launched this application uh, and we launch at the same time uh, all the crowdness level measurements we have on board of our buses. We have installed in all of our fleet, more than 2,000 buses, uh, crowdness level measures. So we, uh, we know how many people we have on board and we expose that information in that application. So you, yeah, and we, we have built some models, uh, short term and long term models. Uh, so you know uh, what are the occupancy level of the bus you are, it is incoming to the bus stop and the next one so you can see okay i will take this one or another one and we we want one step forward which is we included that in the multimodal planner in that application we build a multimodal planner and in case we find a lag in our buses which is crowded uh very busy 50 60 percent 70 percent of the crowdness level we 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 propose alternative to the users one is at the same hour taking an alternative route which is usually takes longer and uh, given a later time where you have the same route with low occupancy, we, we, we think that that kind of uh, on the uh, uh, mixing the offer and the demand is crucial in that orchestration. I agree also with Thibault that it's crucial in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the years to come. And that will be two spots on what we are on now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's correct. We have all shared about uh, how we can gather data and building high value use cases on top. But we all know that whole system have not been designed with anticipation of these needs and use cases. And you've, Juan, you've talked about the quality of data and you have to, that's why I think the, the main, the key challenge uh, for these systems uh, is to, uh, is, to, is to design and develop data-ready systems and how we can handle the old ones, uh, the old system migration to, 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 be, uh, uh, to be able to communicate with the new ones and, and be used to build these new, new uh, use cases. Um, so we see the path to operational hypervision uh, is a long way, and I will I would like to hear from um, Yannick from uh, Lausanne about how your 
you're dealing with this complex journey where where are you from and where are you going to in the journey sure this is a, this is a, a very uh, very topical um, subject here because uh, the network is quickly increasing um with uh, many more uh, like we, we have a new driverless line we have new kind of buses like uh, very long buses electric buses uh, we have a new tram line so the multimodality has appeared in the recent years and we have managed to deal with the multimodality from an empirical uh, method we have basically we have set all the pieces of different modes together and then we have let them work together so uh, and so now, uh, after a, a few years, we have seen that we cannot uh, infinitely work like that because when you have new modes, you have new system, you have new needs. New needs brings new system. New systems need new training. Uh, new system needs new obsolescence issues. So we we found out that we need to have a, a line for that, and we need to anticipate a little bit a situation that will not be uh, acceptable in the near future. So uh, we have take everything from scratch and have a, an aspect when we. We, we think about, okay, we have 10 years. During those 10 years, we have new modes. We have new system. We'll rebuild our, our multimodal PCC. What do we need to compute with this PCC? And what do we need to provide to our customers? So we need data. Data is not all. We need data to compute services. And the services need to be based on the data. So we, we have taken a white paper and say, okay, how do we deal with that? How we manage this? And quickly after, a lot of, of studies during four years we have basically uh, quickly converged to this uh, upper region like you have silos supervision for every functionality or every mode but you need an upper vision to make some control commands between modes and between systems and between functionality of, of a traditional pcc and the, the very one important issue we have found recently is uh, what is really uh, new in our approach is that we don't focus on security we really focus on how we can improve customers' experience with the public transportation. We don't only focus on, on security or safety. It's really okay. What would an uh, what would a customer, a citizen, require from his public transport uh, operator? Yeah, thank you, Yannick. And I, I assume to do all this this journey, we have uh, we need to have people to invest and to to decide and to drive those uh, those projects. So maybe Soren, um, how do you see uh, uh, the, the, the decision decision taking from the public authorities and this past this past to uh, hypervision? Yeah, I, I think also uh, one he mentioned it, but I I really think if it should be successfully, uh, you really really have to show the the, the vision for the politicians because. Uh, uh, they they are not really uh, they don't have an awful lot of resources uh, uh, both in in funding and 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 also to understand understanding what we can do here and um, and and I think I think that on the public hands we really need to understand the value of the data and 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 building up these data warehouses where there's good supervision of the data uh, uh, and 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 also publishing the data and and. And I think now we see that the, our own public uh, owned buses, they are handing in very good viable data. Like you can see that they're doing in Madrid. They're a little bit ahead, I understand. Um, but we, I think also we, we, we might need to, to, to collect uh, and, and make, a, make a good ecosystem for, for the private uh, partners in, 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 in the shared mobility. And, and, and I think we somehow should figure out how it could be value for, for everybody. And, but, but I think on public hands, I think they really should see this, uh, if you're using the national data uh, access point for data, mobility data, that could be a, a place. But I really think that, that it should be on public hands to, to make sure that there are these uh, data warehouses and, and really see it as a part of the infrastructure, like you're laying out roads or, 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 or or tracks for for trains and 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 I think that is what I'm trying to do in in the, in, in the capital region is to understand yes you need to invest in this it's not a lot but it really needs to be there and 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 and, and but I think they are concerned about what are the value what what will we get out of it uh, uh, so that that's something that that needs to still to be discussed. 
Yeah, maybe I saw uh, Juan having a lot of uh, of reactions when Soren was speaking. So maybe you want to react to this and or say a bit. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, for, for we 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 face those challenges, and and we found uh, probably you found also there in Lausanne or in Denmark uh, related to some deadlocks we find on the way. The lack of trust is 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 a big issue. It's a really big issue. Uh, uh, building our mobility as a service, being a, an operator, we face the two sides of the coin. Because sometimes you are a platform provider and you see, I need data, I need access to ticketing, give me all, give me now, high quality, I will make a, an, an outstanding uh, customer experience and get out of the way. And we as operator, we see, oh, they are uh, stealing our customers. So we, we found some kind of, uh, of mistrust in this, in this scenario. What we have learned uh, in that is that being public was a great asset uh, in order to uh, build trust among players. Uh, we have built some principles, mass uh, su uh, sust sustainable principles for mass. We have signed with all the operators and platform. We are integrating our services and in the platform level, and also as operator, our buses, for example, are integrated in, in two platforms, so you can buy our tickets through other other third party platforms. And we built uh, that, those principles uh, sharing, for example, data on purpose, finding what for we need to share data in a, in a proper and plain way. And we are sharing users also, which is sometimes the key part of the of the scheme. So we are sharing users and, and sharing data. And the second thing we have learned is, okay, that's fine that we have the legacy system. And I agree with, with Thibault that we need, and, and with Yannick, that we need to orchestrate and the, the future, but you need to have the plug ready. If the new system are not built to be governed, you will not be able to do that. Uh, so that's what we are building uh, that new concept we call governance by design which is inspired in this privacy by design we learned so far in the IT. Uh, uh, putting a layer of privacy on top of a, a system which was not thought for that is very, very hard because you have a lot of holes and problems and bugs. So we have to build all the mobility information system and mobility as a services and ticketing system with that plaque ready for governance. That's what we call governance by design. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if you can use the couple of minutes we have left to to take one question from the, from the, the audience, uh, we have one about um, operational uh, staff and how you deal with the the journey they have to 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 go through with this whole technology thing we have been talking about. So. Uh, I think it's a question for our PTOs there. Uh, don't know if Juan wants to react or Yannick. <laughs> Yannick, no? Uh, Juan? Yannick. Um, just quickly, it depends on which level we are talking. From the uh, operator point of view, it's not that much a change. We have, from approvision point of view, you just have a, a unified interface, you have unified control commands. So there is as I see, not much of a change from the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, real-time operators. Uh, the real change, I think, is in the maintenance of this kind of systems uh, because it's more and more IT-based solutions. And so what we need to ensure is that the IT, uh, the maintenance from a, let's, let's say, sometimes traditional electromechanical solutions to inf uh, IT solutions, this is a real switch. So, from the beginning, the IT department is really involved in that because they will be in charge of maintaining this, and this will involve some some uh, some more uh, training about how to maintain those solutions. Well, on our case, two 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 things: new ticketing system usually requires new hardware and new training. For example, for QR uh, code to be implemented in our buses, 
we have to put some QR scanners or uh, QR screens, uh, and you have to train your, uh, your 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 drivers to acknowledge that, and that's something we found easily. And the largest challenge we found in the operational level is when we we made a pilot last year, which was a smart bus, a bus on demand. Uh, in the southern region of Madrid in order to help COVID to, to bring people back and forth to the hospital. And that was huge change because uh, what really changed was that our drivers on a daily basis, they perform the same lines. They know the route, they know the stops, and they know perfectly what they are doing. Well, one day you put the uh, dynamic routing and you put there a tablet or some kind of a screen and every single uh, trip is different and that was a huge challenge uh, for, for from our expertise experience and, and that is coming. Uh, I, I don't know how much uh, and where but that is coming. Thank you so much for this. I'm sorry to cut it short. Um, we're unfortunately out of time, but thank you for this very interesting conference and discussion. Um, for everyone listening in, uh, stay tuned on Autonomy Digital for the final presentations of today, but we will also continue tomorrow. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Thank you.